Okay, guys, let's talk about the song Up and Over. This is kind of a Steve Vai-ish type of vibey song to me. I mean, I'm not a real heavy rocker like that, but I, I get a session every now and then like this. And so, of course, I get my Les Paul out because I want that big, thick sound, you know? And, um, and I also kind of turn the chorus on just to get kind of a thicker... It just seems like that's what it wanted, you know? Less of an organic thing, more of a of a um, of an affected type of sound. That's just me, though. But you know, the beginning of this was a little uh, difficult to learn, just because it's you know it's a, it's a kind of a complicated line. Um, two, three, four, one, two. So sometimes the lines can scare you, but I think you might find if you get into them and learn them, they're just kind of like little licks. And you do it a couple times and it kind of gets natural where I don't have to look at the paper after I kind of suss it out for a second. But I nailed that one, I mean, on the pass, because I thought that was kind of important in the beginning because that's kind of a signature little lick. Um, and then, of course, uh, that's kind of important to nail those kind of kicks, too. Um, at that point, the chords are kind of going... A kind of dark, kind of natural minor um, kind of sound that a lot of rock guys do. Um, I think when I was playing a solo, maybe I emphasized the B flat or the F in that a little bit, but I was kind of basically playing just A minor blues and going crazy with as many licks as I could do. This is one of those kind of songs you can just kind of Jeff Beck it out, is what I would call it, where I just kind of go for whatever I'm feeling, and, and sometimes the emotion um, is stronger than the actual importance of the execution of the lick, if you know what I mean. So I was going for some kind of weird things sometimes. I did um, uh, one of those little Steve Morris things I learned back when I used to see Steve Morris back in Alabama. Where he plays like the uh, E, A, flat five and bend up to the five. And then hammer on with your pick. It's kind of a little effect. But that pretty much just kind of wanking off an A for the first, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six measures. And then it's kind of a strange phrase that there's a six measure phrase. And then it goes to these chord changes, um, which are not. You know, kind of. And I found it's kind of F major seven. This next chord, I guess you could call it like an A minor or a C over E. So that right there tells me that it's all kind of an A minor still, because F is in the F A minor world. Uh, and C over E, so I take that back. It's more like in C major, right? C nat which would be A natural minor, which would kind of make sense. So the first two chords, I kind of stayed in the same key that I was soloing in. And then it does the whole thing down a whole, st down a whole step. So I just kind of moved my idea of A minor down to G minor because that's E flat major seven, and kind of like a B flat over D or maybe a G minor. So I'm kind of thinking in my head a little bit that that's kind of in B flat major or G minor. So I just went down a whole step. And then it goes to a C sharp, like a Lydian sound, it's kind of a jazzy chord. But of course there, C sharp Lydian, of course, then B flat Lydian. And I think at that point, I kind of lost my way in the chart and was just kind of using my ear to kind of bend up. And then at the end of these kind of phrases, um, I mean, look, there's all ways we can, you can dissect these things like crazy. But at the end of the year, end of the day, you kind of got to use your ear. And that's kind of what I did in this. I kind of floated around because, um, you know, uh, it felt good. And at the end of this phrase, there's this little walk up. And that's kind of important to, to nail too on the pass. Then it goes through again. Then it goes into like an E minor, um, a little kind of vamp in the middle, there, a little B section. And to me, that kind of sounds like Eric Clapton's White Room, which is I was trying to do something like, like that. I mean, that's what I was thinking when I analyzed it before. I'm not sure if I played it on that last pass. And then, of course, it goes to the 7 4 section. Now, I'm not really great on the odd meter stuff. I have a hard enough time playing in 4 4. But when it goes to 7 4, I just kind of kept playing 16th notes and kind of tried to resolve it around nicely. 
Um, I could have done a couple more passes on that, maybe nailed the downbeat of the seven, of the beat of the measures a little bit better. But you can kind of get away sometimes when it goes seven, four, or seven, eight. I just kind of playing over the bar line, which is kind of what I did. So hopefully it didn't make too much of a um, obvious that I wasn't really playing in 7-4. I was kind of playing four over the seven. And then it goes back to the other two sections of the song. It goes back into the A section. Uh, and then it goes back to the intro again. So this would be important if you were doing a session to at least at the end of the song try to nail... Um, which I did on one of my passes. I don't know if that's the one we'll use, for example, here. But that's how it approaches. Kind of this rock, balls to the wall. Um, I could have done some cool stuff for the Wang Bar, too. But I'm kind of thinking in the back of my head, uh, Eddie Van Halen, uh, Jeff Beck. And, uh, yeah, that's what that is from my perspective. Thanks.